It's teardown time, and this is always fun. You get to tear things apart and see what kind of wear your previous setup saw. The teardown can be used to identify possible issues and provide you with a wealth of information while pointing to things that may need to be altered next time around. Most normal people would agree their camshafts when assembling the motor as they should. However, I did not. I had all the intentions to do so, but when the time came, I did not have the tools or the ability to properly perform the task, so I skipped it. I know, I know. It was very poor judgment on my part, but you live and you learn. I spent the next four years wondering where the cams were installed, how much valve to piston clearance I really had, and not knowing held me hostage by the thought that any use of the adjustable cam gears could cause a change in valve clearance that could possibly cause catastrophic failure. I will never put myself through that again, and I encourage you to perform this procedure to avoid it as well. There are two main issues with degreeing the cams in a 4G63. The first being the hydraulic lash adjusters. You need a set of solid lifters to set your valve train to zero lash in order to get proper readings. This is easily achieved by alting a few junkyard lifters. The next issue is mounting the degree wheel. The bolt holes on the harmonic balancer are recessed, making it impossible to mount the degree wheel as it sits. There are degree wheel mounting tools that are mass produced and sold on the consumer market. However, they are only sold for certain cranks since they must be machined to fit on the crankshaft and properly center the degree wheel. Too small of a diameter and it will not fit too large of a diameter and it would throw off the readings. I was unable to find a mass produced tool to purchase so we will be fabricating a piece to make all this work. This task has been performed and documented by others so we will not be reinventing the wheel here but rather using their ideas and what we have available to accomplish the same task. Thanks Jaffro. I purchased a few tools years ago and this comp cam degree wheel is one of them. You will notice it has a large center mounting hole which is meant to be used with their crankshaft degree wheel mounting tool but they don't make one for a 4G63. The three smaller holes can be used but won't work for this application. I ordered the Summit Racing degree wheel. It comes with these four collets that fit different size bolts allowing it to easily adapt to many situations. Now we need a way to mount the degree wheel to the engine. Since I am not aware of any mass produced tools that work with my setup, we will use this Harbor Freight 22mm deep well socket and a spare crank sprocket bolt welded together to give us a mounting point. Once welded together, we will need a way to mount the degree wheel to the tool. The hole that is already bored into the socket fits a 15 30 seconds drill bit nicely. but a 3164 won't fit. So the hole that is already in my socket seems to be a 15 30 seconds. Looking at our tap and drill bit chart, we find that the half inch by 20 is the closest tap we can use. This means a half by 20 tap will give us some decent threads. We want the threads to be a little shallow here to give the tap a fighting chance at cutting the threads in this hardened metal. Before you go cutting threads, you need to ensure one of the collets included with your degree wheel can properly center the wheel to the tool. In this case, the summit wheel comes with a half inch collet that fits snugly around the smooth shouldered portion of this bolt. We will be using dial indicators throughout the degreeing process and they will play a vital role to ensure the quality of our fabrication here. We have a few different dial gauges with some being more accurate than others and some having more overall travel than others. We also have a variety of dial indicator stands. This magnetic stand can be had from Harbor Freight. This flex shaft dial indicator kit is also from Harbor Freight. It includes a pair of vice grips and another dial gauge. The important item here is the flex shaft. It has a series of sections that can be made rigid by using the collar on the end to adjust the tension on the cable and therefore the rigidness of the tool. The tension is easily applied by flipping the lever. The neat thing is that the threads in this magnetic base are the same as the threads in the flex shaft. With these two mounting tools we have a variety of ways to mount the dial gauges in numerous positions. The socket and bolt receive a little prep work so the weld will stick. I started with the socket sideways but getting the bolt centered would be easier if the socket was facing up when the first tack was applied. 
Apply tack and check to see if the bolt is centered using the dial indicator mounted 90 degrees to the bolt. Find your high spot, mark it, and make adjustments with a hammer, and then recheck your bolt. The threads have slight deficiencies themselves which make it difficult to get a good reading, so I moved to the smooth shouldered portion of the bolt. With repeatable readings, I proceeded with adjustments. This is closer to the socket, so any readings here will be exaggerated at the end of the threads. Once I was happy with the reading, I applied a tack 180 degrees at the first tack. Then we just check the bolt and make adjustments. Once I was happy with the reading on the smooth shoulder part of the bolt, I checked at the end of the threads and I was satisfied that the bolt was centered. All that's left to do is weld her up and grind her down. Next up is the task of tapping the socket. I ruined a cheap tap trying to achieve this, so ensure you have a high quality tap in hand if you plan to go this route. The tap lived to see another day, and now we have a tool to adapt the degree wheel to our 4G63. Next up, we need some solid lifters to adjust the valve train to zero lash. We start with these two lifters from a 420A. That's right, a 420A. Compared to this lifter out of a 1G head, you can see that the 420A lifter is shorter, but the machine diameter of both lifters are within a few thousandths. The shorter lifter should allow us to utilize lock nuts with the finished product. The lifters are easily disassembled using a screwdriver, hammer, and a vise. Be sure to protect the machine surfaces of the lifter to prevent unwanted damage to the lifter bores. Once you have the cap and the top portion of the lifter removed, there's still a few pieces that need to come out. Air pressure is your friend here and it's the most effective way I've found to remove them. Next up, we need to add some threads to our lifter body. Thanks to some old cruise control fasteners, we have plenty of old nuts and bolts that should work. These M6 nuts almost fit perfectly. They're just barely bigger than the lifter bore. This is when I got the idea to use my press. You simply press the nut into the lifter bore and that's it. Well, what if you don't have a press? You can also use a vise to perform the same process. The bolts that we initially tried to use had these captive washers on the end and they were too short. After a little digging, we found some longer bolts that would work. Protect the threads of your bolts to ensure easy adjustment during use. Now chuck up your bolts in a drill and go to town shaping the head of the bolts like the factory lifters. Once you're done with the shaping, polish your creation to ensure you don't damage the rockers. Then check the fit into the rocker arm. Now all that's left to do is add a lock nut. Now you have adjustable, lockable, solid lifters that you can use for degreeing in your camshafts. Happy boosting!